Hey guys, what is going on? This is Ip of Rage Quit TV. Gonna be casting the game between Ehan B. New and Maka Prime. Actually, my bad, it's no longer Maka Prime. He did join Team Absolute Legend. This is the Korean player that was a big name back in the early days of StarCraft 2. Did kind of fade out of the spotlight, but that doesn't mean he isn't good. There's a lot of Korean players that aren't in the spotlight that can take games off people like MKP, MVP, Nest T, Naniwa, etc. In like BO3s, BO5s. It happens all the time in those like Code A and Code A qualifiers. I can't really say that about people on NA or EU. Of course, the big names on NA, EU do stand a chance against the big names of Korea, but uh. Just the random no-namers, I don't think they really stand a chance against those top-name Koreans. When the random Koreaners... <laughs> Koreaners. Well, when they actually do kind of stand a chance. Anyways, we're going to be going in this game. It is a TVP on Daybreak. And I'm really surprised B New isn't scouting after that 9 pylon. Because a lot of Protoss players, they really want to get that scout off. See if the Terran player is going for a 2 racks. Because if the Terran player doesn't go for a 2 racks, they can safely go for a 1 gate expo. We do have him sending out a little bit of a delayed scout at 13. Didn't build a gate. So this is a very odd scout timing indeed. From Binu, we'll see exactly what he is up to. Gonna be going up to 14 workers, so it looks like he may be going for Nexus first. And he does send the scout, looks like it is gonna be timed when he's around 15, 16 supply. So that's when he wants to start building his Nexus. So when the probe does get in, if he scouts something he doesn't like, he hasn't built a Nexus yet, so he can throw down like a gate or two gates in compensation. Also, sending out a little bit delayed does still guarantee he gets in the base before that second supply depot goes up. And now we do see the probe seeding one SCV building, one SCV leaves. So now if he goes behind the middle line, he can get an accurate count. When this does morph, there should be... Th Wait, okay, yeah, 15. He actually cut an SCV. He has 14 SCVs and he's morphing that orbital command. Okay, that is a little bit funky. If I was... Binu right now and scout this, I'd be thinking an SCV is missing. I don't know exactly what Maka is doing right now. A little bit odd to go for OC on 14. We do have the uh, Marine now chasing the one probe down. And the probe doesn't really see anything. We do have a second barracks being placed. And double racks. So he's going to go for a little bit of an all-in right now. The Marine does scare away this one probe. And maybe that's why he cut the SCV so he can get that second barracks up. Or the third barracks, I should say, up so quickly. And this probe doesn't have any idea. We do have a Nexus first and a Forge done. So he is going to be going for a Forge fast expand. And Maka did scout this. So that may be what prompted him to go for these barracks and cut the one SCV. So I think that may actually be the exact thing that uh, prompted him to do this play. Saw the uh, forward fast expand. He's like, okay, well, I don't have any gas, but I don't want him to get away with this. So I am going to be going for a little bit of an all-in. He does have four barracks. Three herb building does have one marine at this washout. The SCV now returning home. That did scout it. And another SCV watching right here. So a probe doesn't sneak in over here. We do have B New sending out a little bit of a delay scout. Keep in mind, he did lose one probe. We do have a sub next one. Additionally on the way, and he has double gases going on up. And Amaka, uh, his time is short. We can put pressure on this. The probe is going to go in the washout. The Marine is going to be taking it out, and he doesn't get it. 16 HP left on that one probe. Maka can be sending out two Marines up top to try to finish the job. The probe is going in. Will he get in a corner? Will the Marines hunt him down? It doesn't look like it. Maka Marines are just hanging tight. And all those barracks are up. He is starting the rally point, so it looks like he is going to be moving out. But this one probe is going to get a whiff of something. And is he going to see anything? And sees Marines come. There is actually an SCV train. And yes, he sees the SCVs come. And this is so big because it takes around 45 seconds for Marines to walk across the map. The gate of cannons build time is 40 seconds. So now he's going to be able to get cannons up to defend against this. And this Mako all in, I don't know if it's going to be that effective. We actually have him sending all his SCVs back. So it looks like he knows that. He's like, oh man, this is not good. Saw my SCV train. And now a little bit of cute micro on that one Marine. Going away from the Zealot, he is going to be coming in, but you can see all the cannons already done. So, these Marines are not going to be able to come out. Actually, I did I just see one pilot, one pilot here. Okay, another one is coming up. The Marines do see all of those cannons, four cannons, and now another pylon is being built. So, it wouldn't be smart for Maka to try to engage this, especially with the sentry out from Binu. Very well defended, and maybe that's why this is the second TVP I've casted where they go for a forge fast expand. 
just because it's relatively easy to scout the Terran player. And again, it takes so long to walk across the map. It is a 1v1 map, but the rush distance is pretty long. Don't let it being 1v1 deceive you. But the Marines do have the smoke on the Watchtower, so they are very safe being aggressive. The Stalker cannot kite them because of the smoke. They just hide in this, and the Stalker doesn't want to engage because if he engages, he takes a lot of shots from these 12 Marines. So, does keep those guys alive. Well, of course, they would have lived. That was 12 Marines versus one Stalker, but keeps them full health. And we do have Maka now going for a double expand behind this just because he knows he is behind he is getting a double ebay up right now and did he throw any scans we have five gates on the way for b new and no no scans go down at all just knows you have a lot of cannons at your ramp and this was a big investment he built three cannons immediately and uh a pylon i want to say two pylons but one was probably four supplies so 600 minerals right there 700 to defend against that fake all in so it looks like the game kind of did even up. Maka is actually ahead in supply, 43 to 41 work account, 36 probes to 28 SCVs. And now the Marines are going to be returning back on home. But I am a little bit concerned. This is a 7 gate, it looks like. A, no, an 8 gate, actually, coming out. And, oh, Binu did chop one of his probes. And is he going to time this with plus one armor? This would be some Ehan timing of Binu if he times this eight gate or seven. No, eight gate, I did say. Yeah, eight gate with plus one armor. And double check. Yep, eight gate. So is that going to be timed well? We do have Maka just scouting around looking for any Ford Ponds. Does have Marine on this one watch. I don't know what this guy's thinking. Just saying back there, another one on this. Watch out. He has really good vision around the map. Now he is still spreading out, so he kind of knows the warp gate timings, looking for those forward pylons. And this one Marine is going to be seeing those units move out. So now he knows you have a lot of gateways. That is a lot of units that you did not have when I moved out last time. So now he knows some all-in is coming. Does have a bunker going up. Is going to need more bunkers than just one to hold this off. This is a big all-in from Binu. I don't know why he's taking out these rocks, but he does have a little bit of time as Plus one ground him has 20 seconds, getting a Twilight Council right now. The probe is building the pylon right here. The wall goes down. We do have Maka seeing this, sees the pylon. Again, sees all of those units, sees all those zealots. So it's going to be smart to just build a lot of Marines and get a lot of bunkers up. If you get Marauders, they're not going to have the DPS you need against those zealots. 1-1 one, one just about done for Maka, and Maka's actually going to hit the Ehan timing. Binu thinks he's got it, but Maka does with bunkers finishing and 1-1 one, one finishing in middle of this combat. Those zealots are trapped now by the force fields. Not really the smartest call for this force field when no units were in the bunkers. And Maka is going to be able to clean that up. And I do love it when I see a Protoss player throw down force fields and it actually works against him. Just because it feels so good when that happens because that is so rare. We do have Binu going for a Dark Shine right now. A little bit of an odd build from Binu right now going for that Dark Shine so early. I thought it was going to be like Blink or something. And uh, does Maka have any scouting? No, he has absolutely no scouting beyond the Forge Fast Command. Bunker is going to be taking some damage. Lots of SCVs are around that. Keeping that alive. Some great repair comes out of Maka. And uh, Binu is going to be forced to retreat. Maka does live with most of his units. 3,000 minerals to 1,000 lost. Binu losing around three times as much as Maka. And this forward pilot is going to be going down. There are plenty more around. This one probe is hiding. This Marine doesn't know that's there. So when Maka moves out, Binu could still do quite a bit of damage with DTs. Never count a Protoss player out when they have DTs on the field. And especially this one here where he can do some great force fields, pick off a lot of units. The pilot looks like it is going to be staying up, but does he warp in units to defend this? Or does he go for the DTs? Maka right now, being the cool player he is, does get a missile turret up just in case DTs did come out. So I don't think it's going to be too successful, but we do have a warp prism coming out. And keep in mind, there are these four cannons back here for Binu. And that is going to be a little bit of a pain for Maka to get past. So he does scout the third base, sees the third base isn't going down. This command center has been done for ages for Maka, just keeping up that SCV count. DT does run right on in, and Maka actually missed targeting and killing off one of his supply depots. Oh, that would have been hilarious. 
All the SCVs already run away. DT letting himself known, gets scanned, and does go down. And a warp is moving out, but Maka will be able to... No, he will not scout this. Just on the brink of vision. No, he does see that. But the question is, does he really see that going across the bottom of his screen? The factory going in for a little bit of a scout. He's got to be a little bit confused. He's seen the dark shine. He's seen the uh, uh, warp prism now. So he's like, okay, what the heck is coming? We do have the warp prism now. Going to be warping in some DTs, most likely to drop them in immediately. And this one DT does kill a Marine that I guess was going for scouting. Third base is going up for Binu. Maka hasn't lifted this up yet. He will momentarily, most likely, once he notices. He is starting to mine out of his main, going into the workers. 40 to 51. Did I miss something? Maybe it's a lot of SCVs died repairing those bunkers. Because those DTs were not really that effective. I haven't seen any other run in. We do have a probe now. going to be coming to build another forward pond, but this one Marine... Will scout it and take it out and see the pylon building. And that is a lot of units moving out from Maka. And the DT, again, does scout that. So that does clue the warp prism to come in. That is a zealot, not a DT in the warp prism. And what are you doing? Very small force from Binu moving on out. And that was a little bit risky. The DT finding a hole in those uh, um, force fields. Warp Prism is going to be hanging tight. The Zealot, I don't think, really did any damage. No, I don't think it killed no workers. Blink is on the way with a Colossus as well. Maka is working on plus three infantry. We do have plus two ground drama. And uh, still just plus one attack. Mobius Reactor, if I didn't say that, Thermal Lance. So it uh, looks like Maka is in the lead right now. He is ahead by four supply. And also going to be ahead in those upgrades as he is at 2-2 two, two and Binu right now. Just at 1-1. One, one. Does have a lot of Zealots. And that's a little bit odd that he went for Blink before Charge with this number of Zealots. Zealots just get eaten alive. And now it's up to his force fields. No more sentries left. It looks like his third base will be falling. And yes, the third base will be going down of Binu. Mach is still on two bases. Hasn't lifted off that command center just yet. So Binu not in a horrible spot. He is going to have to hit some type of Colossus timing though before any sentries come up. Mach has plenty of units back here to de deal with the one warp prism. And it looks like he is just going to be retreating, going in the army supply. It is 42 to 83. Protoss definitely is behind now. That Thermal Lance, though, almost done. Blink now just finishing. More Zealots whooped in. I th really think Charge may have been a better call, but maybe he's worried about drops because all his tech is literally clustered right here. Can you imagine, like, if a Marauder drop came, took out the Dark, uh, dark Shine, Temple Archives, Robo Bay, and Facility? This is, like, all his tech. Even got the Forge right next to it. Nothing is spread out. The gateways are a little bit spread out, but all that tech is in one crucial area. At least it's in an easy-to-blink-up-and-defend spot. Marine is going to be going down. We do have the third base being rebuilt. Marine then does scout it, so he knows the third base is coming up. It has a lot of Marines, and this is what I'm worried about. Maka only has really Marines, and now sees these two Colossus. A little bit of a mistake to use them to kill that one Marine. I think that's the first sign of the uh, Colossus being out, at least the count up to two, which says I can no longer move out. If there's three Colossus, they will just one volley hordes of Marine at a time. So he needs to start getting a Viking count up. And that's exactly what he is ending up doing. Work account is 49 to 46. Relatively low work accounts for being 20 minutes into this game. Plus one air weapons on the way. So maybe he's got that Colossus a little bit earlier. Still has no vision of the main. This one Marine on patrol I think saw the Zealot walk around. And maybe they just missed because he is on an attack move command. That was odd. And right now Maka just gearing up. Just spreading his units right now, so if Binu tried to attack, he would have a good concave. And even has Ghost here in kind of the middle, so he can always get some EMPs off, which will be crucial. The Templar tech is on the way. The Templar archives is about halfway done. Third base now just finishing, stunning the gases after the Nexus finishes. I talk about this every time just because I want to let people know. Not the best to get gases after the Nexus, just something that not many players do, even at high levels. Terrans don't really need to do it because, as you do see, Maka doesn't really need gas. He's, uh, well, maybe he does. He's only got 100 gas and 700 minerals. One SV in each of those geysers. 
And that is a lot of air units out, both Vikings and Medivacs, 8 and 9. 11 Marauders, 15 Marines, and a handful of Ghosts. He's got to land good EMPs. If he doesn't land good EMPs on everything, I think these Colossus could just tear away those Marines with some decent force fields. But if he gets EMPs on them, then this could be over extremely quick. Scan's going down, just looking for any force. Vikings trying to get in a good position. He wants to engage right here where his Vikings can go right here and pick off those Colossus without the Stalkers doing much damage. Doesn't look like he's going to be trying that with his Vikings. But right here is a very good spot for those Vikings to be because the Stalkers cannot blink underneath them. Ghost are going to be cloaking. Does scan. Sees no Observer. And oh, those EMPs. Every single unit EMPed right now. But oh my god, he just lost a lot of Marines. There's a lot of Vikings though. Taking out those classes very quick with the kiting backwards and all those medevacs. It looks like he may have just enough. Those classes melted. And there's still plenty of medevacs alive to keep these bio units alive. These ghosts now under siege, but still doesn't have an observer. A lot of cloaked ghosts still doing damage. And this is not looking good for Binu. 69 supply right now to 159. GG, well played. Maka does take that game in a relatively cool game. The little fake all-in. The Forge Fastest Man to the fake all-in. That was really nice from Maka. And that wasn't really a fake. That's just like, oh, crap. I got scouted, and he's going to get cannons up because his cannons build faster than I can walk across the map. So let's pull these SCVs back and double expand. Why not? That was a pretty good game. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Take care, and I will see you tomorrow. Oh, and if the game quality isn't as good, my apologies. That's not my fault. That's not me playing Diablo 24-7. That's all the pro players playing Diablo. So there's not nearly as many games on Drop SC, SC2 Rep. SC2Rep.com actually hasn't updated in, like, three or four days since the Diablo release. So... Everyone's kind of been slacking. It's been hard to get replays. Generally, there's a Team Liquid replay pack out by now, which isn't. So hopefully that comes out in the next few hours and I have games tomorrow. But yeah, my games have got really dry since that Diablo release date. But uh, yeah, I'm going to go play. Take care. See you.